Hi, and thanks for dropping by Visual Art Photography. You can easily take pictures like this, like this, or like this, with just a few items and a little bit of imagination. I'm going to show you how. As always, your very important questions and comments can be addressed down below. Now, as I mentioned off the top, there are a few items that we're going to need. One, we're going to need some oil, canola oil, vegetable oil, corn oil, something like that. You're going to need a little water, and you're going to need some food coloring. So those are the three essential tools uh, for this project. Also, pretty essential, you're going to want to use a macro lens or a set of extension tubes or a combination of both of those because you're going to want to get it pretty darn close on this project. Optional for you for the project. Um, poster board, something that's colorful or maybe just a piece of white paper. These are optional things. You'll see why in a moment. Up to you. You're going to need a piece of glass. This happens to be beveled but it, that just it's because it's what I have. It doesn't have to be beveled. It has nothing to do with the project. It's just something that you need light to be able to come through. So you're going to need a piece of glass. You're also going to need a container for your oil and water here. And that's going to go and sit on top of your glass surface. And you're going to accomplish that by propping up that glass surface on a tabletop or whatever surface you're using with, in my case, uh, a couple of stacks of CDs. It doesn't have to be CDs, obviously. It can be anything that you have that's available. But you're going to want to prop that up. And I'm going to show you in a moment exactly what that setup looks like, okay? One other thing. Two other things, actually. Some containers for the water and food coloring, that mixture, because you're going to be using that. Also, you're going to want an eyedropper so that you can make your water drops I'll show you how to do that too. And finally, your light source. Now I'm going to be using my studio lighting, but you can easily use window lighting, no problem. But you are going to need one more source of light. In my case, I'm using a clamp light. It doesn't have to be that, it can be something else. But you're going to want to have that below your project and to the side. And I'm going to show you why. And let's get going on the setup and how to do this. So just before I show you the setup, I'm showing you this because this is a shot with two different colors of food coloring, but you wouldn't know it because it's straight food coloring. I hadn't diluted it, so uh, it just comes out like black ink. So you have to combine one or two drops with water. So as you can see here, I actually have a piece of paper underneath my container, but that's something that I didn't keep there for very long. But what I want to show you here is the CDs holding up the glass holding up, which is on, the container is on top of that. You can also see two, my two little vials there of uh, two little containers of food coloring and water. And then you take that. There's oil in the container right now. I've put a little bit of oil, uh, maybe a quarter of an inch or something like that. And now I'm dropping some of that food coloring into the oil to get results. Now that was blue water. Now I'm combining that with a little bit of red water. So we have different color water drops. I'm going to try different effects by putting white paper underneath and some of that poster board underneath as well. So what happens is you come up with something like this, which is kind of flat and very two dimensional. What we want, really, is something that looks a little more three-dimensional. And that's where that light comes in that I was talking about. That third light or second light, depending on how many you're using. And it really can make your image pop. So here's that other light that I was talking about. It's a clamp light. It's actually attached to my tripod leg. And it's underneath and to the side. And look at the difference. You can actually see the form of each of those bubbles. It's really three-dimensional now. So in this one, light is going through the paper, but the paper is actually, the white paper is over the light. So your result is flat. If you take the paper away, look at the difference. Wow, three-dimensional. It's popping out at you. Now, for different reasons, you may 
prefer something like this. Depends on what you what you're trying to do. But I have to admit, my eye really likes the idea that you can see the depth of those bubbles. Look at this one. This is just jammed, just jammed with all kinds of bubbles. It almost looks like some kind of a holiday wrapping or paper or something. It looks like, oh my goodness, it looks like something you hang on a, on a tree, on a Christmas tree or something like that. And you can achieve that effect a couple of ways. Here, I'm using a straw, but you can use a spoon or anything else to agitate your solution there. Or just swirl it around a little bit and agitate it that way. And you'll get some really small bubbles. Don't be afraid to move in even closer. And if you can't get closer, you can always crop, right? And get something like this. It's pretty amazing. Using that side lighting again, you see the depth. But you don't always have to jam it with bubbles. You can use negative space too, like here. Flat, if you want the 3D effect, make sure your light is there and shining from the side and from under. And it adds a lot of depth to it. This one, very metallic looking, right? Well, that's because there's no paper involved. It's just the clamp light. It's just the metallic clamp light that's reflecting up there and it, it makes everything look really, really metallic. Depends on the effect that you want. Not much in the way of color with this one. It's kind of like a gray background, but you may want to change it to something like this. Or maybe something like this. One thing I actually didn't think of at the time, and you may want to try this, is to say take three pieces of poster board and put them up like this and, and put that underneath your project and see what kind of colors and results you get with that. Anyway, hope that uh, gets you going, gets your imagination flying with some interesting macro photography. Until next time, I'm Ray Scott reminding you, it's not what you see, it's how you see it. And I'll see you soon.